What is going on, fellas? Uh, this is questions number 47. Once again, we're trying the thing where we do a few less questions or a lot less questions per video and do these a little bit more often. You guys can let me know if, what you think of this. If having the more frequent videos is something that's nice, let me know. If you feel like this is spam in your feed of videos you don't really give a shit about, also fair, let me know. Um, so we're gonna do two questions today. As always, if you guys have a question, you can throw it uh, in the community post that I will put up once I work my way through the majority of the questions uh, from this past one. So the first question is, do you think that squatting every day can help with recovery and technique proficiency? For example, doing your main heavy slash volume squat work two times a week and squatting very light, like 50% for two to three sets, uh, four to five times a week. And what I would tell you, right, I've talked about this a little bit in the past, and I, I don't want to get too deep into this because I make a separate video at some point, maybe. Um, squatting, training your squat every single day probably isn't wise uh, because recovery is just as much part of the adaptive process as the training is. Uh, so probably not the move just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But that being said, we might not be able to train our squat every day, but can we practice our squat every day? Uh, that is to say that only on some days are we doing sufficient volumes and intensities for it actually to drive any meaningful change, but we're also doing some light squats in the other days to practice the skill of squatting, and this can be done. Um, if I recall correctly, I think Matt Venna uh, did something like this where he was doing like squat bench deadlift all six days a week, but not all six of those were genuine training sessions. A lot of them were just kind of greasing the groove with lighter recovery style work. Uh, so I can tell you that, yeah, if we're only challenging the squat two days a week, uh, doing effectively doing some light squats to warm up for our other lifts on the other training days to get really familiar with that squatting motor pattern, it can work. I don't think it's necessary to get your technique locked in. I don't think you should need to squat seven days a week to make forward progression within your technique, but it can be a temporary strategy uh, that you employ. But I find that most people eventually move away from this because there's enough other work that they have to perform within that same training week uh, that just including all of these technique touches on the squat just gets in the way of all the other crap you have to get done uh, to get better. So yeah, it can be done for a while, but I think that there's probably constraints within time spent training that start to emerge that make people back off of that general approach. Um, and it doesn't have to be all or nothing, right? You could have those two uh, like actual training sessions and then before you do your main deadlifting work, also have a light touch. So, hey, you know, I'm practicing the squat three days a week, but I'm training it twice. Cool. Uh, it doesn't have to be every day or only when we're doing hard training, right? We can find the intermediate step, which I think is, I think, where the, uh, the answer really lies. Uh, for powerlifting purposes, does targeting specific areas of a muscle really matter? For example, for quad hypertrophy, focusing on the outer quads versus inner quads uh, or the triceps, what head you're working. Um, no, it doesn't really. There's, there was an old school bro science school of thought that the real muscle that was helpful for getting strong was the muscle that was closer to the joint, right? So having lower tricep mass is what really mattered for getting a big bench press, right? This is pretty unsubstantiated. There's nothing really to support this idea. Um, and I think that the paradigm that I like to work off of is as uh, someone whose primary focus is strength training, we should be thinking in like in motions, not muscles, right? So instead of saying, oh, my triceps, you're, you're thinking, oh, elbow extension, right? So even let's say we get through our main lift and maybe we've got some like heavy strength focused work and you're like, well, I need to get my triceps stronger. Well, maybe following the same idea, we're like, okay, well, how can we ch challenge that elbow extension more? It's the function. The triceps is what happens to get worked, but it's the function we're looking to improve. And maybe you're going to press against bands or chains. Or you're going to do a pin press. Or you're going to do a board press or something where we're really challenging the ability to lock the elbow. That That's what we need to get better at in the bench press. It's kind of roundabout to say that what we need to improve is our triceps when really what we're talking about is the function. Um, so for our strength work, thinking in terms of motions, not muscles, is very helpful. But even I've found that when you get towards... Uh, towards your true hypertrophy part of your training. If your goal is physique, yeah, absolutely. Think uh, with, think about think, breaking things up in terms of muscles. I think that's the easiest way to break stuff apart, right? Uh, but if our goal is only strength-based, and I know most of you probably have a bit of both, and that's okay, so thinking in terms of muscles, totally okay. But sometimes I think that if we, our main goal is strength and we're doing the hypertrophy component of our training, even then thinking in terms of function makes sense. We're like, okay, well, I need to get better at elbow extension. I want to hypertrophy the muscles associated with elbow extension, so how do I do that? I find a motion that trains that joint through a full range of motion or a large range of motion, 
So we're thinking about the, the function, and then we want to get a big range of motion, make sure that we're not limited by a different function. And like, so it's like, okay, well, we're not doing a motion where our shoulders are failing first. And then we want to apply like the right rep ranges and the right number of sets to grow. But what kind of that comes back to is instead of thinking, oh, I need triceps or quads, right? In the squat, you're like, well, I need to hypertrophy my knee extensors, right? I know all this sounds really convoluted and you're all like, Sam, shut up, just say quads. But I do think that's a helpful perspective to look at your training through. So uh, I think thinking muscles in general isn't entirely necessary. Um, and especially what part of the muscles being worked, that's like not just one step removed, that's not two steps removed, that's like three steps removed. It doesn't really make sense. If you're training a function that maybe prioritizes uh, one of the heads of the muscle, well then by just focusing on doing that specific function, that head of the muscle is going to hypertrophy uh, more so. So rather than looking to the end result, uh, we're probably gonna want to look more like upstream to why we're doing it and just thinking about it from that perspective. So no, really doesn't matter thinking about what head of the muscle you're working um, predominantly and we should probably be just looking towards function. So that would be my answer to the two. I know that second one was a little bit uh, long-winded, but I hope you guys liked the video.